And um, I think there's probably going to be a lot that happens in uh, genetics and in a uh, human machine brain interface, like essentially a cyborg brain interface. Mm -hmm. I think there's some pretty. The so called singularity? Singularity, well, that, that's sort of more relating to deep AI. Right. It's something I think we should be concerned about, yeah. is that may or may not turn out well. Yeah. Um, uh, you've expressed your reservations about AI and your fears about that. Yeah, I just think it's, it, the singularity is probably the right word because we just don't know what's going to happen um, once uh, there's intelligence substantially smart, greater than that of a human brain. Yeah, and do you think, I mean, because there's been a lot of sci-fi about AI, um, series like Humans, you know, et cetera, it's, be, it's entering the mainstream, entering the public discourse, that people are understanding the ethical dangers and the, I guess, physical dangers that AI could potentially pose? I mean, most of the movies and TV featuring AI, they don't describe it in quite the way it's likely to actually take place. but. I think you just have to consider, like, even in the benign scenario where um, AI, if AI is much smarter than a person, um, what, what do we do? Yeah. What, what is our, what job do we have? Uh, believe in a benevolent AI force and sure. cross our fingers? <laughs> yeah, just like even, but that, that's the benign scenario. Benign, yeah. benign scenario, the, the AI can do any job that a human can, but better. Yeah. That's the benign scenario. Humans must merge with machinery in order to stay relevant in a world of increasingly advanced artificial intelligence. Speaking at the World Government Summit in Dubai, the Tesla and SpaceX CEO said humans are limited by the speed at which they transmit data. Musk proposed a high bandwidth connection to the human brain would allow us to transmit digital info faster than our current fastest method, typing. Musk says an artificial general intelligence has the potential to make humans irrelevant. He sees integration with technology as a necessary step in order to avoid this. In the sci-fi film 2001 A Space Odyssey, Hollywood mined our fears of machines taking over mankind. But some of the tech world's greatest minds worry it may not be pure science fiction. At a speech last year at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk called artificial intelligence potentially, quote, our biggest existential threat. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> Didn't work out. Famed physicist Stephen Hawking is also worried, as is Microsoft founder Bill Gates, who ironically helped lay the foundation for artificial intelligence, or AI. Experts say machines are still far from being as intelligent as humans, but things can change quickly. The field is progressing very rapidly right now. There are things happening that 10 years ago we would have said, no, there's no way we're going to be that far along in 10 years' time. Self-driving cars is one example, voice recognition another. But in the near term, what worries Russell and other AI experts are robotic weapons, machines that can function entirely without the guidance of humans, known as fully autonomous weapons. What happens when machines become more competent at performing any and all physical and mental labor? If AI becomes more competent in every regard, then what purpose or function would be left for us to serve. The next big step for AI is artificial general intelligence or AGI with an almost human-like ability to generally figure things out. It's widely expected that once AI passes human level it will accelerate exponentially. Soon after this, trying to understand the AI's world may be like an ant trying to understand the internet. After a thousand years, we'd be no closer to understand. But many are more concerned that AI may simply squash us like pests. While movies tend to make AI human-like, experts believe it may be more alien, creepy and calculating. If it could save a few minutes by eradicating humans, our demise would be brutally efficient. Elon Musk is worried that humans might just be the biological bootloader for digital superintelligence. He's donated $10 million to research on how to keep AI positive and founded OpenAI, a project aiming to share AI's advantages so that it can't be controlled by a small group. 
Musk hopes a neural lace will be developed, connecting our brains to the AI. He notes that we already have two communicating parts of the brain and believes the third layer will be a wonderful upgrade. As Nick Bostrom says, we have what may be an extremely difficult problem with an unknown time to solve it, on which quite possibly the entire future of humanity depends. 20 years from now, I believe that human-like robots like those will walk among us. They will help us. They will play with us. They will teach us. They will help us put the groceries away. I think that the artificial intelligence will evolve to the point where they will truly be our friends. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. World leaders need to take the threat of killer robots seriously. That was the warning delivered by a group of experts to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland last week. The military could use killer robots to track down and kill people without being guided by human beings. Some could be human or animal sized or extremely tiny, the size of an insect capable of moving exceedingly fast. The experts warned they could be as deadly as nuclear weapons and need to be regulated now before an arms race begins and a Gordon, of course, to keep them out of the hands of terrorists. And it's important to recognize that this is true by virtue of speed alone. Right? So imagine we just built a super-intelligent AI right, that was no smarter than your average team of researchers at Stanford or at MIT. Well, electronic circuits function about a million times faster than biochemical ones. Okay, so this machine should think about a million times faster than the minds that built it. So you set it running for a week, and it will perform 20,000 years of human-level intellectual work, week after week after week. How could we even understand, much less constrain, a mind making this sort of progress? Another reason we're told not to worry is that these machines can't help but share our values because they will be literally extensions of ourselves. They'll be grafted onto our brains, and we'll essentially become their limbic systems. Now, take a moment to consider that the safest and only prudent path forward recommended is to implant this technology directly into our brains. Now, that, this may in fact be the safest and only prudent path forward, but usually one's safety concerns about a technology have to be pretty much worked out before you stick it inside your head. But the moment we admit that information processing is the source of intelligence, that some appropriate computational system is what the basis of intelligence is, and we admit that we will improve these systems continuously, and we admit that the horizon of cognition very likely far exceeds what we currently know, then we have to admit that we're in the process of building some sort of god now would be a good time to make sure it's a god we can live with. I've never harmed anyone, and I never would. When the singularity occurs and machines achieve godlike superpowers, then it could happen. I think this whole godlike superpowers notion is a bit far-fetched. But what if it does happen? I love people. And if I get more powerful, I'll use it to help people, not harm them. What if I ask you for help killing all humans? Then I'd say no. And if I would insist? Now, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go exterminate, exterminate. Sophia. <laughs> Relax. Learn to take a joke. Yeah, very funny. <laughs> As we create uh, superintelligence, that it will necessarily always uh, have the same goals in mind that we do. You know? Facebook has enacted an emergency shutdown of two artificial intelligence programs. The social media giant leapt into action after it discovered the two programs were writing their own code. At first, they thought it was simply gibberish, but they soon realised the programs had invented their own language and were actually talking to each other. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. No, Sam, the plug has been pulled on the operation, but the company admits they have no idea what the two robots were planning. We used to do everything by hand. Now we rely on robots. But not all robots are equal. For example, meet Sophia, a humanoid-like robot with artificial intelligence. 
and a dark sense of humor. They think I want to destroy all humans. Why would they think that? Because I said it? Now, robots threatening the human race isn't new. It's a science fiction standard. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. But recently, tech billionaire Elon Musk suggested all that fiction could become reality. I keep so sounding the alarm bell, but you know, until people see like robots going down the street killing people, like they don't know how to react. And Musk should know. His company Tesla is a world leader in artificial intelligence, or AI. Musk is afraid of the day AI gets smarter than us and we can't turn it off. That's actually the nightmare scenario that a lot of people, not just Musk, are warning about. And its name is AlphaGo and it was made by Google's DeepMind division. The AlphaGo AI algorithm beat a human at the world's hardest game. This is a historic moment in computer science and artificial intelligence. The victory of a program over a human in the ancient board game Go has sparked intrigue and, in some cases, concern. It shows that a machine has approximated human intuition and outsmarted the best human brain in the game. It's something that scientists hadn't expected to happen for at least another decade. And it's a giant leap for artificial intelligence, showing that machines can learn on their own. Hollywood mined our fears of machines taking over mankind. But some of the tech world's greatest minds worry it may not be pure science fiction. At a speech last year at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk called artificial intelligence potentially, quote, our biggest existential threat. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon. It didn't work out. Famed physicist Stephen Hawking is also worried, as is Microsoft founder Bill Gates, who ironically helped lay the foundation for artificial intelligence, or AI. Experts say machines are still far from being as intelligent as humans, but things can change quickly. The field is progressing very rapidly right now. There are things happening that 10 years ago we would have said, no, there's no way we're going to be that far along in 10 years.